Welcome to the booby trap. <laughs> Get tight, sir. <laughs> Here's our bait. This is about the perfect size bait. Bait Masters of South Florida carries this bait. Um, actually a little nicer than this bait. Uh, this bait's fully rigged, ready to go. 7691, 300 pound mono leader. Clear, preferably. Um, I like pink also. But this is the setup right here, ready to go. Matt's got the wind on leader. 65 foot. 65 foot with a Dacron loop, about 10 feet from the top. Then we've got, it's a four pound lead ball on Depend about four to five feet stretch of 80 pound mono. That Depending way. on your current is how big your ball is. It can be as low as two, it can be as high as five. This is a four pounder. We keep it on, on light enough mono leader that if for some reason this weight snags the bottom, we don't lose our whole rig. We'll end up breaking the weight off before we lose everything else. Got our two LP diamond lights. Again, those are positioned up the leader anywhere from 25 to 30 feet to start with. And then the second one going up about another 20 feet from there. Both on the leader and held in place with rubber bands. And finally our window weight. Which can be rebar, same Which thing. Which can be rebar or, or window weight or anything you can make in this sh general shape with the weight you need. Um, piece of number 17 fencing wire. Which is your hook to hook Which right is here. the hook to hook. It's, it's light enough to bend if anything, on, if it snags anything on your bait except for your hook. So we'll you show you that real quick. Off. Let's do that real fast. Let's pretend that it is snagged. Let's snagged on the bait it will pull loose ah. so the wire not being too heavy will pull free of the bait if it does get snagged in a rock or something and our window weight is just coated in some plastic dip it's uh, it's a plastic rubberized type of paint it, it, these are very rusty when we get a hold of them it keeps rust off the boat keeps you from beating things up and we, we do the wire as well this is our GTS rod. You can get him at Melton's, he's got him now. This rod has a bent butt by the push of a button, straight butt, push of a button. You need him, sword dives on you, you can get some torque on it. If he's running out or you want to hold it straight up in the holder, it's there. There's lots of purposes for it. We're using the same exact rod, Blue Marlin fishing out here in Costa Rica every day. We're using it for our big yellow fins, chunking everything. So, with the swordfish daytime fishing, we use braid, usually 80 pound. On a 50 Talica or a 30, 30 wide uh, Tiagra is fine. Uh, the rod was built for the tip action. If Matt, if you'll hold that for one second. The tip action on this rod dang, really has a lot in the tip. This rod was built several times to get this action out of it. So, when the swordfish is close on the leader, this is very important. It takes away from human error, giving the rod, the rod gift. Swordfish are soft on the bottom, hard on the top. If you can see purple, you're pulling up, you usually don't pull a hook. He will turn and turn to you, you see white, that's his belly, and he's window washing, it pulls out the soft part of his mouth. This can help prevent that one or two second snap of the finger that he turns on you and doesn't pull. Most swordfish are lost in 100 feet of the leader. This rod was built for that part. The bite, as some of you have seen on our videos, the bite is so dramatic on this rod. I mean, you, it's, you can see it. This rod is designed for a three to five pound cannonball weight, which we'll show you in a minute. Uh, we use a five, six, seven pound window weight or a piece of rebar to drop it. We'll discuss that also in this article or the next one. But, but this right here, this action is perfect on the bite and at the boat. We've caught swordfish, several swordfish in the two to 400, 450 range on these rods. Um, there's been, I don't know how many blue marlin we've caught on them now, but 200 pound yellow fins plus. I don't know, since we started building this exact rod, probably three or four hundred swords. I don't know how many. Probably pretty 
Um, yeah. But these rods are go-to rods, period. Now, and they're light enough for stand-up. I mean, they're 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 just that's it. Nighttime, daytime. I like mono at night. I like Dacron. I mean, a braid during the day for sure. We'll go to some of the terminal tackle. <clears throat> what we have here is, is a standard issue. It's a 100, 100 foot wind on. <clears throat> About 10 feet from the top of the wind on, I've got a Dacron loop. That loop stays there. It's not moving. It's, it's permanent right there. What goes on that loop? is this four pound cannonball with a long line clip. That's gonna be your top lead. 80 pound mono holding it from the long line clip to the cannonball. A lot of people, I noticed in different articles and whatnot, they're using 10 foot of line here too. It's too much to get in the boat. Matt, if you'll hold it there, I'll show you exactly why I say that. So this is on the leader when it comes to the boat. If you come up and grab it, the sword has it tight it's one flip into the boat. If this is seven, eight, 10 feet long, you've got to fight this into the boat. The leader gets slack, the captain doesn't go forward, something happens there. But this clips onto here. This keeps your bait down. This doesn't get it there, it keeps it there. So, that's what this loop Matt has made on this wind on works as. So the weight that's gonna get you there, this is this way it's gonna go hook to hook with a bait. Shut that here. I've got this hook a little exaggerated, bent in the wire here just so you can see it for easy viewing. I like the smallest hook possible to, to keep this hook to hook here to get it to the bottom. The only reason for that is with that larger hook that way. I'm gonna show you the release. Go ahead. When, with that larger hook that way. If it doesn't release the way it's supposed to, as he's about to show you, it'll catch it'll catch a stitch, and that has not ripped a bait apart. But it will it'll fight you getting the weight to drop off. Here's how it comes off. That's it. We'll do it again here. So this goes onto the hook. It's very simple. Hook the hook. We call it a booby trap squid sled. <laughs> it's ripping to the bottom. Hits the bottom. Bait comes off. It's fishing. We've tried so many different ways. We'll do it again just to make sure it's clean. So many. We've tried so many ways until this became the way we did it. Easy. It's off every time. So this is a window weight. They're not. They're not available everywhere. But what is available is a piece of 11, number 11 rebar. Cut it about, if you're using a two to four pound weight, you always want this weight heavier by a pound or two than your top weight that keeps it down, or it'll foul on you on the way down. So this weight, if that ball is four pounds, three pounds, this weight at six to seven is perfect. A piece of 15 pound, this is a six or a seven here. A this is a six pound. No, it's a seven. It's a seven pound window weight. A number 11 rebar is about the same size as this, so about 16 inches long. You can weld you a little top on it right here, or you can just go around it with wire and put a piece of tape. You're getting rid of these. It's a one and done deal. So, here we brought these to Costa Rica with us, but even rebar is available here. So, cutting them in 16 inch pieces. This one's been sprayed with rubber, just a spray can rubber coating keeps it from rusting in your boat, keeps it from banging things up a little bit. But that is it. The hook to hook method. Right there. That's it. The release. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm gonna show them the lights and stuff now. I don't know how much of this is going to use in this one. We'll go ahead and do it. What we have here, we've got two diamond lights. Um, our preferences are the green or the blue strobe or the uh, the multicolor slow action strobe. Um, these lights give 
a, a fairly good amount of life for their for their price. Um, yeah, they're very inexpensive. I'm 12, I'm just guessing twelve, 12 fifteen dollars a piece. Uh, we get multiple trips out of. Them. Yeah. Uh, the continuous light, the the disco, I guess it would be called, the or multi the multi multicolor. It's a continuous light instead of a strobe, so you get about half the battery life out of that. One. These are LP lights. Um, you don't want to run these. Everybody tends to want to get them closer to the bait to get the bike further away from the bait. The closer to the bait that you have this light, the more the swordfish is going to beat on it. You don't want them to beat on it. You want to whack it and eat it. So we get these lights. We'll start them the first one at 25 to 30 feet. If the fish are beating on the bait, we'll move it up 30, 40 feet. I put two mainly because if one goes out, you have another one. Um, one light is sufficient, but two is just an extra cautionary. If you're down there, you may as well be making sure they work because there's a lot of pressure at 1,800 feet. But one of these, let's do this, Matt. We slide this light. This part of the wind on is connected with a cat's paw to the to the reel, to the line, main line. At the other end, before we crimp our squid and leader on, we'll slide this light onto the onto the leader. I got a rubber band right here. Alright, hold that mat. What we'll do now, the angler can reel these lights where the, the leader man doesn't have to pop the light loose. We get this rubber band and we go around like this. And there it is. Now, when the angler reels it into the rod, he can break the rubber band. See it come loose right there. It breaks itself. The wire man has nothing to do with it anymore. He doesn't have anything to cut. He doesn't have anything to break loose. The tip of the rod will break that rubber band off. This rubber band is actually just a touch heavier than we usually use. I did that so you can see it. Uh, this is a, what, 32? 32 or 16. So, 16. 16. So, Something the next size smaller, but but that light is on the leader, so even when that rubber band breaks, you don't lose the light. You don't lose the light; it slides down the swivel. One more tip on 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 this: sometimes the swordfish will hit the light itself. That's a bad thing because what happens is the swordfish breaks the rubber band, the light slides down six feet from the bait, and he leaves, or he just beats on the bait for five minutes and leaves. Or he snags himself. Most swordfish that are pulled off are snagged. They're not fed, they're snagged. So when the light gets too close to the bait, they get more ballistic, more radical, and they tend to snag themselves or leave it or blow it up and start spinning. So if you come up and you know that you've secured this light well and you get up and your light is against your swivel, your, your swordfish was there and broke it loose and left it because the light was too close to the bait further away from the bait the better no question about it and to run the two it's the same way you just put the other one on just like this and there you have your two 125 30 35 feet one up above that we typically use 65 foot leaders unless we're trying to do something IGFA then we go to IGFA length but 65 foot leader is, is fine for the way we're fishing some guys using 100 200 300 65 to me is perfect